cool. So that's just so you know that we were in the right place <laughs> for the joint photo sig and uh, JCC RA chat. Dave, you're up first. Okay. Well, again, I'm not the photographer like uh, Dick and uh, other folks are, but uh, these are all just with my cell phone. But my my daughter lives out in Western Kansas, and it's Sublette, Kansas. If you know where that is, it's oh, yeah. right right between uh, Garden City and and uh, and Liberal, and so it's right in the middle. And she lives in the city, but right across the street from her is a field there. But this was taken during July Fourth, and happened to catch through this rainbow. And her house is on the left there. And, That's the only uh, green patch in western southwestern Kansas. Probably so. Yeah. <laughs> yeah exactly. And, and if you really look closely, they don't have any grass in their yard, but they just finally put some grass in their yard just last week, actually. <laughs> so, uh, but anyway, I'll be, I always enjoy going out to Western Kansas. I like getting away from the city a little while. In fact, every time I go out there, I usually just before dinner time go out and just sit outside and just sit there. And uh, so anyway, this is just one of the pictures I took. It was during that 4th of July weekend. So oh, I love that rainbow. Yeah, it's hard to get a full rainbow anymore sometimes. Sometimes yeah. you get half rainbows, but we got the full one there. So, okay, you can go on the next one. This is just a little sideline for Dick Stein, but Sidney Nixon was from Sublette. Ah, okay. I have to ask my brother-in-law because he was born and raised there. So, I mean, my son-in-law, I have to ask him about that. So, well, yeah. Sidney Nixon, uh, she was a student at Emporia State when Dick and I were there. Oh, is that right? Remember, remember Harold and Sid, Sidney Nixon? Yes, I do. You had, a crush, was, you had a crush on Sidney. Yeah, I did. I did. She was, <laughs> she was a sweetheart. Okay. I'm going to find out who that girl is and go for, and talk to her when I go out there next time. Well, so. her, her, uh, her soon-to-be husband was spent a lot of time with her, so that, not a good idea. Yeah. Okay. Okay. <laughs> And here's some more pictures again out in Sublette that same day, actually. And wow, that's some, beautiful. Some clouds of some clouds. And of course, when you go out to Western Kansas, you know, you can watch a lot of the sunsets. So it's really nice out there. And, uh, but again, you can see the yard, but like I said, that yard now has grass in it. So they, they just built their house a couple of years ago. They just never got the grass in yet. So but anyway, this is right across the street. So right across the street is a field. And they live, they still live in the city, but right across the street is that field area. So I think they got one more cloud picture, if I remember right. Go ahead. Hey, Dave, I have a question. What sure. took your daughter to plant? Uh, her, her husband, her husband's a, a, a crop consultant out there. And uh -huh. um, he met her at uh, K-State. And, but yeah, uh -huh. Dana, my daughter spent some time in Los Angeles and Oregon before she got married. And uh, so that's how then they, then they got back together once she was done living out in, in, in California. So, okay. Interesting. Anyway. Yeah. So she went from, she went from Los Angeles to Sublette. Wow. Oh, Quiet. <laughs> yeah. So again, that's a, sublet, that's a sublet down. Exactly. <laughs> and another picture of the clouds again. Uh, again, yeah, you, you really see, you know, you can see storms coming in out there all the time. And, uh, so there's you definitely a little storm coming in there. So yeah, it looks like there's already some rain dropping. Yep. In the, about the center of that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's and a beautiful my, shot. My son-in-law knows that area like the back of his hand. I mean, he he's been living there forever, and he, he and, but he only works for really big, huge farmers. He doesn't work for smaller farmers. He even works down in Oklahoma a little bit. So he has a pretty good business actually. So okay. Again, this, you guys have probably all been to that sunflower uh, farm out near Baser. I don't know if you've never been there before, but I just I just took this picture. It looks like someone put a face in a sunflower here. And uh, <laughs> if you've never been to that sunflower farm, it's out near the Baser area. It's worth going. I wouldn't go there on weekends unless you like crowds. But we went during the week, and it, and it's a it was a great time to go. I think that's technically Reno. Is it Reno, Dick? Yeah. Yeah. Right along uh, 2440. Uh huh. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, we took some back roads to get there, which is really nice in the fall to get to that place. And I took my mother with it, with my wife and I, my, and my mother. So, okay. I love the happy face. Yeah. Yeah. And again, here's, here's the farm again. And you probably have seen, if you're, if, if you're on Facebook or anything like that, a lot of people take pictures out there and, uh, 
and, and take couples go out there a lot and take pictures at the sunflower farm. But yeah, it's pretty fun to walk through and pretty enjoyable. And by the way, you can pick those sunflowers if you want to, but they ask that you leave a donation uh, when you when you leave in the parking lot to leave a donation for what you pick. But we picked a couple and used them for a little while in our house. So, all right, I just got a few more. Oh, uh, my my daughter. Uh, there's a, a Mead, It's called Mead M E A D Mead County Park, yes. and this was a take. This is right in the middle of nowhere. Oh. And, she takes her kids there. It's still like almost 45 minutes from her house, but she takes her kids all the time there. She does these uh, nature nature trails once a week with her kids, where she just takes her kids out and just learn about nature and whatever. Cool. And I went with her to Mead County Lake and uh, very peaceful right out in the middle of nowhere. There were people that were camping out there, but there was a beach there, um, but it was a really nice day when we went there. Okay. Beautiful. This was one Matt of my favorite Dillon. pictures. Yeah, this is my Matt daughter. Dillon used to go to Mead. Matt that's Dillon that. used to go to Mead quite often. Yeah, that's right. The Mead, the, the, <laughs> the hideout there for sure. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, this is a this is a picture of my my grandson and my daughter. Thought it was a great picture. Cool. Just there, just there fishing on the lake. Yeah. Just, this this good memories. That's unusual <laughs> for my son to be that my grandson to be that still for so long. <laughs> he's, he's usually he's usually all over the place but it looks like fishing took care of that so anyway all right i think i got one more a couple more pictures i think oh that was the last one i had from you dave oh, okay okay this is um meadowbrook park my wife and i walk there quite often and uh, uh it, i just particularly like the clouds this particular day it was it looked threatening but it didn't rain and um, so I just I just kind of like the the photo the clouds and the building that that building there uh, I assume they're condos or something. Every time we walk by, it reminds us of uh, something down at Disney World. You know, mm. some of the <laughs> vacation club. And that Jonathan, to... that's a hotel. That's a hotel. That's a hotel. Yes. Well, they're, but but there have, but there's they have a great little. Uh, restaurant i can't remember the name of it is but next time you're walking in there walk over by there and check that out well the the back side now th that may be the back side i've seen people with u-hauls dropping off uh loads of furniture so i wonder if right there's a restaurant called verbena's right uh -huh. in the center of that and then there's a hotel and then yes there is apartment buildings or condos around it oh okay so this front part is a hotel though what you're seeing there? Well, that right in the very middle of your picture um, uh -huh. is the is the restaurant with that um, hotel. The, the restaurant inside the hotel. Oh, okay. Yeah, that's okay. right. Okay. Where well, we it? never we never stop there. We just simply walk around it. <laughs> that was a place that used to be the golf course, right, Jonathan? Is that yes? Correct? Uh, Meadowbrook Park, a uh, Meadowbrook uh, golf course. Right. And the city, I guess, took it over and they're building all sorts of houses. You can see them on the right hand side there and they're packing them in. I mean, when we first started walking there, they were spaced out nicely. And I thought, oh, these folks have some nice land around. But now they're packing in additional million dollar homes in there. So it's. So is that 95th and Knoll area? Uh, yes. Yes. To the east, right. east yeah. of Knoll. Yeah. Wow. I had no idea they had pr progressed that much. Yeah. It's between Somerset and 95th Street. And uh, I think it's Knoll on the one side. And I'm not sure what's on the other side. Row. Okay. Row. Row? On. Oh, okay. Yeah. Good. Thank you. It's real close to me, but I've never been there. Okay. Um, I don't think Glenn is on. But he, he sent a, a rainbow picture. So I guess we'll go through these fairly quickly, unless somebody has a comment. <laughs> Which one of these is Glenn's? Yeah. This one is right here? No, I'm sorry. I meant the oh, Corvettes. Right. The Corvettes. Oh, oh, yeah. Well, what he told me was, the only thing he told me about this shot is it's a uh, 4th of July pre-parade, where they're basically lining up for the, the parade. And I'm not sure which 
if any of them are his. Does he have a Corvair? Yeah. Oh, oh yeah. Does he? Cor Abs yeah. Corvair? Sure. Corvette? Yeah. In fact, when I went to his retirement over where he was working, he had a Corvette there. I want to make oh, sure everybody okay. saw the Corvette when I went to his retirement party. Oh, trust me, that's it. It was on campus. <laughs> Which one is his? The, the blue I or? I don't know. I think it's the red one that's down in the corner. Oh, okay. Maybe he's taking the shot from. From the uh, car. Yeah, from well, the car. Oh, yeah. Wonder, okay. Probably. So. Just a guess. And then this is, uh, I think, Glenn's third one. He needs a shave. <laughs> uh, I think that, I think you're, you're right. To talk. He's trying to catch up with you, Dick. <laughs> you have to understand the scruffy look is in. <laughs> And Debbie, this is yours? Yeah, this is, um, it's uh, in a holler, seven miles west of Alma. Mm -hmm. And uh, the, the house, the newer part was built in 1900. And I'm not sure when the original part was built, but my friend has lived there for, I don't know, more than 30 years. But it's, it's, like I say, it's in a hall or you just, you know, go down the hill and well, a bunch of hills and it's just uh, uh, at the bottom. Across the road, there is remnants from a, a original uh, road. I don't know, if, not a highway, but definitely a road. See the, the stone uh, left over from the, the construction. Hmm. But it's a... Uh, it's a great old house and made of native stone. I have a picture of one of the, the bricks and you can see the fossils in it. Hmm. Cool. Oh, I like that. I wondered if it was native stone. It yeah. makes sense. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. But um, yeah, my, my friend Bud McCurry uh, lives there. I went to high school with him. And so I go out whenever I can and visit. It looks like the outbuilding is also native stone, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. There are several more. I didn't uh, include any pictures. One of them has kind of fallen down, and um, yeah, you know, the, the roof falls in. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's a it's a great location, and you're able to see all the stars and um, Marla Mann. This was taken four years ago. She and I went out in November, and it was a perfect day, and uh, we we ended. We, we had planned on, we spent the night, but we sat out under the stars and you could just see the, the Milky Way. And the, but you could hear a coyote that was come, it was across the road from us and it kept getting a little closer and a little closer. And Bud has an Anatolian Mastiff and, uh, you know, which, which was a protective sheepdog. And so he, he did, he, he took care of his, his business, kept us safe. <laughs> us, but you could hear that coyote getting closer and closer. Felt like I was in a Willa Cather movie. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. So it's this is more of the the land around buds, and um, you know I don't know how you can capture very much in a frame. You know, maybe a wide angle. Um, I don't know, but that's just a November the, the field mm -hmm. of his house. You know, you could see that it was not a, a cloud in the sky. It was really a a beautiful day. Two days. Hmm. And there's Bud. He's ca he's calling us to dinner. Uh, every week he makes his own bread, and uh, he's an excellent cook, excellent chef. Uh, like I say, I've known him for years and years. And in the early 2000s, he was, we were at a, a, a gathering and he said, you know what? He said, I'm a, I am um, related to Barack Obama. <laughs> and his, so his dad was Barack Obama's grandmother's, I don't know what level of cousin, if they were first cousins or what. They've never met, but um, but that's still... Yeah. Related. Nice connection. Yeah, he, and he's tall and slender and just the greatest guy. Well, there's Marla. She's, we're, we're trying, we just gotten there before, you know, the sun was getting low. So we ran out and we're trying to get some pictures in. Pretty flat hills look. 
Uh huh. Yeah, she thanked me. Okay, then this is on our way to the the Kanza, um, the park, the prairie mm -hmm. reserve, oh, yeah. and it's a shuttered church. I think it's probably Catholic. Mm -hmm. but, um, it was made of native stone as well. Sure. Where where was that specifically? Um, it would be on the north side of seventy. Mm -hmm. it, into the entrance to the Kanza Kans Park yeah. Reserve yeah. from the uh, from the west. Right. So. Yeah. Hmm. Oh wow. Mm -hmm. That's lovely. Yeah, I was a. Uh, um, there was a cemetery and. Um, the church and the and then this scene, the sky was because there's not not a, a cloud in the sky. Oh, the clouds back there. It was beautiful. It was a beautiful day. It was in November. It was just perfect. It's a beautiful backdrop. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Like the flowers. I don't know if they were draped there or grew there or yeah. Face. Yeah, I don't remember now. They're probably not real. They're just probably. Plastic or something, but oh, okay. I don't know. That's four, four years ago. <laughs> okay. Well, I threw in another one. This is from Heritage Park, and I was just kind of fascinated with all this pollen, and <laughs> especially since we're now getting into cold weather, it was just nice to see some pollen, even though it makes me sneeze. But uh, there's a there's a little uh, pond off to the side. This is not the, this is the smaller pond off to the side of Heritage Park out in, in Olathe. I took about three, four shots of it. My wife was thinking, what the heck are you taking pictures of pollen for? But I knew <laughs> I had like, a purpose for them. Looks like caterpillars. Yeah, they do, they do. And John, you're up. Great place. John went to the head. <laughs> Don needs to unmute himself. Oh dear. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. This is the Chase County Courthouse, and all of my shots are from the uh, Flint Hills. Uh, this was designed by the, the first architect, was the same architect of the Capitol. So I showed you the Capitol the last time. Same architect. <clears throat> And I, I know Alanis Morissette would say, isn't it ironic <laughs> in wow. Kansas to have this yeah. 120 foot high tower. You can see this tower all over Chase County from positions all over the county. It's that tall. Oh. Mm -hmm. It's um, French Renaissance. And if I could just ask that architect one question, it would be, why? <laughs> why French Renaissance? But it's an attractive building, and it's been uh, there since 1873. Oh, wow. Did you tour it, John? Uh, but peeked in the windows. They've got, uh, they have uh, the original uh, jail cells up on the second or third floor. Yeah. And they're, they're, they are steel, old, old steel. Yeah, and, and, the stair and the staircase walking up to the top is really remarkable. And uh, it's, it's my favorite courthouse. I've been to several courthouses in Kansas. This is my favorite one for sure. It's a good, good picture, John. Yeah. I love the uh, pole distance marker. That's a timely reference. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And um, that wrought iron up there. Pretty spectacular. Uh, the population of Chase County is only 2,800. Mm -hmm. They have a very nice courthouse. So here we are, and you have to ask yourself, why do they burn the tall grass prairie every year? Mm -hmm. And the reason is it kills the trees, which would kill the prairie. Right. There's immediate regrowth of nutritious grass so it sustains the prairie, and that's the, that's the reason. We would not have a tall grass prairie had it not been burned. 
But of course, it pollutes the air and it raises the ozone level to dangerous levels, or, or at least to levels that exceed the allowable limits in all the cities downwind, including our city. <laughs> but I think the um, environmentalists have all agreed. I think there's unanimity in agreeing that they should continue to sustain the tall grass prairie by burning it. Just time the burning not to occur in the times that would be most damaging. We have on this faculty, you know, our own Anthony Fauci, and that is Deb Williams. <laughs> she is the professor of environmental science and biology. And I've toured uh, out in this all over Western uh, Kansas with her uh, on one of the tours. And um, it was so interesting to hear her uh, speak about this. Um, I don't have a good, a really good picture of the burning from a, because I've never found a high enough yeah. outlook to, to really get a vast uh, picture of it. But there is a gorgeous painting of the burning in the Overland Park Convention Center, right in the lobby. It is a gorgeous painting of the burning. So my picture doesn't do justice to it. Actually, it does, John. I've seen many, many burning pictures and yours a good one Rex, right up there it's very good yeah i agree i've got a big painting and this one is much more vivid than that that i have i could just feel the heat and uh, i was just really uh, frightened by it and enthralled by it uh, i spent a lot of time out in the flint hills i do love them Okay. Controlled burn, and so they had the they had some implement that they drop on the ground to keep it going, and they're there. The firemen are there to in case it gets out of control. Absolutely, it's really coordinated well. Um, the roads uh, help, and I you can see that I'm standing right on the edge of the road. They they stop they stop it, unless there's a very strong wind. They shouldn't be doing this when there is a strong wind. But if it gets away from them, they jump the roads. So that's blue stem. Blue stem. Yeah. I don't know all the grasses' names. Uh, they the the ranchers found out from the from the Indians. The Indians started burning the the fields intentionally to draw the buffalo in because the grass that comes up almost immediately within a couple of weeks is so nutritious that the herds uh, of <clears throat> cattle are really fattened much, much more on the burned, on the, on the regrowth, the re Those, um, the, the roots system are typically 10 feet deep. That's why, that's why you don't burn them out. Oh. I've seen hey, one John. of those uh, where the whole plant is two stories high where they've excavated all the way down to show the to show the depth of those plants. Hey John, you mentioned fire and buffalo. I have a <coughs> painting here by a council group artist named Judith Mackey, and the painting is a fire and buffalo. Yeah. Hmm. Hmm. Um, well, you, I think we owe a lot to Nancy Kassebaum, probably Bob Dole, uh, in naming um, this area as a the Trawl Grass Prairie Preserve. This is near Strong City in Cottonwood Falls. And I, I think the building is interesting. It's a limestone barn. That's another, isn't it ironic? <laughs> and a monster of a barn. Uh, second, second largest in the state. Yeah, uh, a, grand, a grand thing. Um, but I, I think that the interesting thing uh, around here though is the 
Flint Hills and the Tallgrass Prairie, not the man-made structures. This is, this is an interesting uh, stopping point. Um, I, I, I read recently an interview of a rancher out there and, and he said, if we were able to put a plow in the ground out here, you would be standing in the middle of a cornfield <laughs> or soybean. <laughs> but they couldn't plow it. It was it wasn't arable land, and so what were they to do? Well, it just came natural to them to become ranchers of and cattlemen, and um, and they are to this day. But um, they've been able to preserve uh, some some part of the prairie, which used to, of course, be immense. So I, I love it as a national, it, they, they wanted to, uh, Nancy Kessebaum was lobbying for a long time to, to get it designated as a national park, but it didn't rise to that level of, mm, there, there weren't enough people who were enthralled with it, I think, uh, as you would be with Redwoods or you know Grand Mountains or something. So it, it just didn't have the support for that, so. It's only a preserve. So I, um, all of these shots were taken in the spring. I was leading a caravan of air streamers uh, out, out to Topeka. We spent a week uh, in, in Topeka and went out around uh, Kansas, uh, day trips out from, uh, out from Topeka. And um, I do love it. And I also love the fact that this is one of the darkest spots in America out there, as you mentioned. Uh, you, you can't see the Milky Way uh, much closer to Kansas City than there. So, thanks. These are those photos. I'm not sure who submitted these. I, I don't know if it was Jet Glenn or another Smith, because I forgot to save the email, and, but. And well, that's my house. Pardon? I said, that is not my house. Okay. But what great pictures of the snow. Well, it, it gives me a chill seeing this, but. <laughs> so to speak. I think this is a pool with snow on it, but so we'll just go through those quickly. Um, <laughs> I, uh, when we talk about Kansas beauty, I, I have to include my, my daughter's, uh, daughter, my daughter's dog, Belle. And, uh, she used to have around the eyes, even darker, uh, coloring. And, uh, I always thought she looked very, very sad, which works to her advantage because everybody likes to get close to her. And pet her and all that. So, but I thought I'd throw, throw Belle in. Dick, it's you, all yours. <clears throat> okay, folks, this is uh, obvious what it is, um, but it's um, between Emporia and uh, Newton on Highway 50. Um, it's around the little uh, village of uh, uh, Clement, which is right along the Cottonwood River. Um, so I had driven by this hundreds of times over the years and never had my camera with me, which is inexcusable. Um, plus the best shots you get is early in the morning because that's facing east. And um, this time uh, it was a light enough, bright enough day in the afternoon that I uh, we went ahead and, and uh, shot it up a little bit. So, um, 1896 uh, is, the, is its year, and um, it, there's no invitation to go visit in it, um, but it looks like it's pretty well up, you know, kept up. So it's central Kansas. And I'm oh, assuming uh, it's a schoolhouse? Another thing, oh yeah, schoolhouse. Um, it's, a, it's an outhouse on the left. And I didn't bother, but very unusual to have two outhouses. 
at one of the able country schools. But over for the right, uh, out of sight, uh, is the other one. So um, there was a uh, good distinction between the two. Okay. See what else we have. Um, <clears throat> look at the left window there in the, in the bottom left. Uh, can you recognize what that used to be? A train. Yeah, okay. That's right on the Santa Fe. Again, uh, it's, it's closer to Newton, uh, a little town called Walton. Uh, yeah. It's right on the east side. And uh, I'd, I'd seen that building a number of times and um, I finally thought somebody needs to preserve that because the town ain't preserving it, that's for sure. Mm -hmm. um, so I just like uh, the, the total structure just intrigues me. Um, built in 1880, obviously, um, and one window out right there. That's almost planned, looks like, right in the middle. Okay, let's hop on the train and... <clears throat> uh, John, this is an answer to your white cloud picture of last time we met. Uh, for anybody who would like to see Nebraska, Iowa, Missouri, and Kansas at the same time, uh, there is a dirt mound out of uh, White Cloud, which White Cloud itself almost doesn't exist anymore. It's right up in that uh, in the northeast corner. Um, and that point, if we're looking more at uh, Missouri across the river, uh, to the far left uh, is uh, Nebraska. They're in the bend in the river. Iowa is about where those far white clouds are. And you're standing on Kansas. I've been there. I've stood there. It's kind of underwhelming, isn't it? Uh, uh, yeah, somewhat, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> But you do need to have been there at least. Yeah. yeah. Well, and Rulo is not far from there. That's kind of a a, a wild right on the river. Yeah. Yeah. And and that's it's fish fries. Fish fries Rulo. Ah. Big lake. I, I used to teach. I used to teach at Highland Junior College, community college, and so I went to White Cloud and Rulo quite often. Hmm. Yeah. When were you at Highland? Uh, right after I left Emporia, so that would be 67, 68. Yeah. And by oh. the way, White Cloud is the setting for part of the movie called Paper Moon with oh. Tatum and Ryan O'Neill. Yeah. An old black and white movie. Much of it was shot in White Cloud. Wow. Well, that's when it was a town. Yes. I, I danced there one time in White Cloud. You danced there? I, I, I'm sure I did, but they, <laughs> and the old building and they set up a band and it was somebody's friend's band. Mm. So, and we stayed in cabins at Big Lake. And that's across the river, right? Right. In Missouri. Right. And, they, and it's not far uh, where they do, do goose hunting. They got uh, blinds. Yeah. Blinds. Well, I just wanted to show that that shot for John because it was com comparable. Yours is better, I think. But anyway, we'll take it. Okay, move it. This is also in for John. It's the outside structure. Um, I just love that Indian up on top. Mm -hmm. Oh, it weighs tons, tons. <laughs> how, any idea how tall that statue is? I don't. I, I read a couple of weeks ago. I, I, I can't remember. I just was so awed by how much it weighs. <laughs> but the tornado in 66 took the, the top of the Capitol. 19 or 18? 1966. No. So, the tornado that went through Topeka. 
I went to high school right across the street from that building. Oh, I remember that tornado. I was in Emporia, summer school. It was huge. Hey, Dick, I, I had a chance to actually walk up to that top of that dome. And it's pretty scary, to be really honest with you. It's one of those kind of stairways that's not connected to anything. It's just going back and forth. And then once you get up there and walk around, you hold on the railings really tight <laughs> because there's not a whole lot of space to walk around up there. So but it's, it, and they haven't always let people up there, but they have, they have lately though. It's good. I had a few jumpers. Yeah. Really? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. Have, has anybody read about uh, the new National Park, uh, Little Jerusalem. Yes. Yeah. Yep. This is the essence of it. Um, there's a little bit more to it than this, but but not a lot. Uh, right down in the Smoky River, Smoky Hill River Valley, farther west than the. Uh, uh, gosh, the ones I showed last time. Uh, monument. That's not monument. right. Yeah. Yeah, Monument Rock. Monument Rock, okay, it was right. About, oh, I don't know, 15 miles west of it and south about five. <clears throat> it's but, in Oakley, isn't it? Oakley, Kansas? It's, it's south of Oakley, I think. South of Oakley, about 40 in, miles. In Gove County, yeah. And yeah. between Scott City and, and Oakley. Right. And it's off to the west side of the highway, uh, about three, four miles. It's, it's interesting to go out. If you like that kind of thing, which I do. Um, Was it on private property? Uh, a family uh, donated it, yes. <clears throat> In fact, you can see uh, probably their farm, about has to be. And then it's a little misnomer, they call it a farm. Uh, it's a house and, and it's a layout. Uh, but it's um, it's, it's to the north, uh, maybe across the old riverbed, but it's really, it's kind of fun. I have a couple of shots of that also, but um, <clears throat> this is what I wanted to, wanted to show because it gives you the best image of it. And, and you, can, you can hike down into it, uh, but they're very careful about, you must stay on the path and don't do this, don't do that. Uh, they're just trying to keep it pristine as much as possible. Hey, Dick, didn't it let Little Jerusalem just open up this year? Or last year, I think. Last year, okay. Mm -hmm. yeah. I heard it's really nice. And I've seen a number of write-ups about it, so I just, I was out that direction, might as well. You see a lot of fossils? Oh, all over, yeah. I mean, you have to be looking for them, I mean. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, they're definitely there. Okay. And Jim. Mine is more historical than pictorial, if you will. But this fits into the theme. I thought Debbie was going to steal my thunder. Uh, oh. this, is, this is around Alma. Mm -hmm. oh. And it's really a fascinating little historical piece here. Uh, you, can, you can just read it for yourself and see what it was. Basically, people were paid to build these stone fences. And actually the place where the stone fences are is very beautiful. I just didn't take the picture of that. But Alma itself is known as the stone, the city of stone, as Debbie knows. Many, many of the homes there are stone. They're much like the stones you see in the buildings on the K-State campus. But Alma's a pretty little town. It also has an Alma cheese, if you want some Kansas cheese. And out of Alma is also a beautiful place called the Skyline Drive. And it just simply for miles goes away up into the hills and you see nothing but hills and once in a while a small farm, but it's really a beautiful place. So this if you head that south, place. you'll end up at uh, Alta Vista, I think. Yes. It says right. 17 miles. It is a beautiful drive. Mm -hmm. It is. And especially in the fall. <clears throat> okay, now so you can see the, see the fence. Next. Uh, and that's what they were paid to build. Wow. I like What's it. amazing to me is that it's still there. People haven't tried to steal the stones, haven't damaged it. 
Uh, it's still there. It's still just striking. And there's quite a bit there. This is just one segment of it. But. It's on 99. Yep. 99 going out of Alma. Next. Beautiful. And this is just a shot of the Flint Hills. We've talked about the Flint Hills quite a bit. It's just a beautiful, fascinating area. And I also want to show you something else. You're probably familiar with this, but a book was written in 1991 called, can you see this? You probably Prairie heard it. It's called Prairie Earth Prairie by book. William Lee Street Moon. Right. He was at the time uh, a writer from Columbia, Missouri. And he went to live in Cottonwood Falls because at that time, back to the, the National Preserve and so forth, at that time, there was that big debate. Do we want to leave the land the way it is or do we want to have this National Preserve coming in and you know, somewhat changing the culture of the area. So he lived there for probably two or three years. And the whole book is basically interviews with the people he lived with and learned, got to know. It's just a fascinating story about all these towns we're talking about, all the different places. So if you ever have a chance to read it, uh, it's called Prairie Earth by William Beast Moon. It's a long book, yeah. but it's interesting. Hey, Jim, I have read that book uh, before too, and it's just excellent. And, uh, it's not only just the people, but he talks about the nature and talks about the yes. farmland around the area. Yep. And uh, it's, it's, it's an excellent book. It is long though. So you just need to take the time. Good. There was some very, very strong opposition to changing the whole culture and the whole nature of the place. A very strong opposition from some of the farmers in particular ranchers. And that's my story. I don't know if any of you have been out to the Sealy Mansion out of Abilene. Uh, he basically uh, was a purveyor of uh, medicine, you know, a medicine man of sorts. And uh, we went into the, the garage area before we went into the mansion. This is part of a Johnson County Parks and Rec 50 plus tour. And I just, I liked uh, all the old bottles. And then in the house itself. Oh, that's great. He had a collector of, a collection of uh, nutcrackers. <laughs> and I didn't show it, but uh, I have a picture of the bowling alley he had in the, in the basement uh, of his house, <laughs> which is a, was basically a long wooden trough you would roll the, the balls down and they would reset and all this sort of thing. So, but I, uh, I just thought that was an, an interesting shot with all the nutcrackers. Has anybody been out there? I have. It's well worth the trip. Really? Yeah, it's, it's fascinating. Even the story, and you go into the house and the house has like a, a hearth and a fireplace. It has all these little tiny pieces of tile and uh, it, it's just, it's quite an experience, quite beautiful, really. And again, where is that, Jonathan? That's uh, Abilene. Oh, okay. And it, um, the other attraction of Abilene, of course, is uh, the Eisenhower Museum and the Eisenhower Home. And this is a shot from, um, you know, from inside the, the museum, which they have completely redone since, since we were there. I think we were there in 2017 and they've since re redone the whole thing. So I don't know what it looks like now, but uh, I like these sculptures uh, mimicking the, the historical photographs. Yeah, the Eisenhower home was definitely worth the trip. It's yeah. fantastic. Yeah. Um, I got a couple of minutes. So I'm gonna go on to a couple photos that Dick sent in. Very late. Very late. About 45, <laughs> but we got 45 minutes ago, probably. <laughs> oh, that's great. Wow. Is that Cowboy, is he 3D? It's uh, Kathy's brother. Oh. That's on the, uh, the, the family, the last 80 acres um, that, that he inherited. Um, and every, and he, was an, he was a teacher in uh, Colorado, in uh, Denver. And we would meet at Christmas time every year. And we always, he and I always went out and fixed fence. 
So this is the southwest corner of the property. And we've been working all day. And you can see the, the old roll of um, uh, barbed wire there that farmers do. Not that they ever use it again, but it's they always, they never throw it away. Um, and we'd been working <clears throat> all day. Uh, my and Kathy called on the cell phone because uh, the family moved into town after that, after they sold the farm. And they said they reminded us it was time to come in to dinner. And I said, not yet, not yet. I've got a sunset here, got a sunset. We're gonna be a little, we're gonna be a little late. Um, so Ken is my, uh, my model. And that's one of my favorite shots. I have, uh, I have that on, uh, in canvas and, uh, and I have it in a variety of, of ways. Um, and so that's just one of my favorite shots of all time. That's beautiful. Um, yeah, it is. I'm sorry, did you say that was at your place or it was somewhere else? It was uh, the Kathy's uh, Weaver maiden name. That was the Weaver Farm down in uh, Harper, Kansas. I forgot Harper. to tell you where that was. I'm sorry. Yeah. Uh, north, yeah. east of town up on Highway 2 on, mm -hmm. on the way to Wichita. Um, and that was a Christmas time. You could tell the leaves are gone. But that just actually makes for a better mm -hmm. sunset. Yeah. Yeah. That'd be a wonderful postcard. I've taken that to a lot of shows. So that's how you know Rosalia, huh? Oh my gosh, yes. <laughs> how do you know Rosalie? Uh, they back in the maybe late six early seventies, there had been an article about her hotel in Harper. You and I have talked about it though. Oh, so, uh, yeah. Then, I, She's, she is still alive. Yeah, well, I, I, she was doing real estate at KCK last time I heard. Oh, hmm. Anyway, that's too long a story to get yeah, yeah, I was involved in. <laughs> That you can tell what that is um, Campanile up on the uh, the hill. Um, that bronze Jayhawk down by the, um, by the stadium. Just struck me as a uh, uh, archetype uh, Kansas shot, unless you're from Manhattan or. <laughs> anywhere else well i have a similar shot but uh the jayhawk has red and blue on him did you burnish him down for oh the shot or? this let's see this shot is a, it's about five years old uh so they may have done something in between i don't know well the one i'm talking about is probably a separate one it's up by the alumni center oh yeah this is this is down the hill okay kind of like the team is <laughs> at the bottom of the hill. <laughs> okay, I think that's all I have. Yeah, I think that's all we have. Any comments or questions or? You know, if I can mention something about um, John's presentation and about Cottonwood Falls, that's, that's definitely my favorite city in Kansas and it's a small town, but one of the things they do on, on Friday nights during the summer, if you're ever interested, is that they have this Emma Chase, what they call music, where people can just come in and bring blue, you know, banjos, guitars, and anybody can come. There's no, there's no organization to it. You just get up there and play. So who wants to play next? Who wants to play next? And and it's worth the, it's worth the time to go down there. And a lot of times you can do it outside, but sometimes when we went, one time it was raining, so they went inside. But especially if you like bluegrass music like I do, it's it's a, it's a great thing to do on Friday night uh, during the summer and it's in Cottonwood Falls and, and it's right downtown there and it's, it's a perfect setting for it so just want I wanted to mention that. Dave do you remember the first time the symphony in the Flint Hills we saw you there? Yeah and you know that was in the Alma area too if you remember yes. right it was yeah. yeah and that was the symphony in the hills is it's pretty expensive now but at one time it was pretty cheap to go there but uh, we've been to several of those things but yeah, hey, that's I, a, I paid for the first one, $10. Yeah. 
It's right there at uh, Strong, Strong City, right there at uh, that John's barn that he showed us, the yeah. second largest yeah, yeah. barn right. in, in the state. Yeah. 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 And I paid for it. And then after that, uh, we did, we got, we became part of the staff. And so uh, we collected tickets or uh, worked in the art tent. Um, and so we got to go without pay. Uh, the last one we went to, everything blew away and we haven't been back. All right. I think one of my favorite times I had one time in Symphony in the Hills, I'm a, I'm a real big uh, uh, movie person. And I love one of my favorite movies is called How the West Was Won. It was an old movie from way back when, and uh, they were playing the symphony music one time, and then all of a sudden they brought all these cattle up over the hill out of nowhere, and they were playing How the West Was Won theme song. It was perfect. Couldn't have been more perfect than that. So, uh, yeah. Well, Patty Reese, uh, uh, Jerry Reese, you know, Reese Nichols, she's got a place in Vallon, Kansas, that she's redone a building and uh, it's not far from Alma. I, my guess is that it's probably east of Al, uh, Alma, but I'm not, I see her posts and, and she would invite people to come out and they would have openings, but she was really big into photography, you know, into the SCP Society for Contemporary Photography. So, um, and that's been going on a, a couple of years, but they had some mariachi band from Topeka come and sing and they were really trying to get that going stalled out this last year, of course, but that's something I would like to check out. Any other comments or are we finished? Thank you, JB and Dick. <laughs>